In this video, I'm gonna show you some beginner tips and tricks and tidbits of advice to paint polishing for beginners. So maybe you're just getting started on your first vehicle, maybe you just purchased your first machine and you wanna go out to your garage and polish your paint to remove some swirls and scratches. I'll talk about the uh, down pressure you need, the pads, uh, I'll talk about the towels, I'll talk about the method you use to polish and a bunch of other information. To check all the links to the tools and products that I use, check down below. But again, don't worry about exactly what I'm using. You just need something similar to what I have or whatever you have, make it work with that. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's say you wanna polish your vehicle. We're using Adams Polishes Polish, pretty straightforward on there. Uh, and the directions say, it's pretty standard, uh, apply four P-sized drops, put it on the surface and, and, and tap it to apply it evenly to the surface. Uh, speed five or six, uh, do crosshatch patterns, um, two to three crosshatch patterns, and then wipe it down. And if you don't like the results, I just draw some polish. Uh, repeat steps one through six, which is what I just said. So there's, there's various methods to um, priming the pad. The pretty standard one is you just put the um, product onto the pad and then you just work it in and if it just needs a little more to just get it even cool you don't need to completely saturate it because that's what the, that's what's going to happen once you start polishing so just a little bit just to kind of make sure you get the whole pad foamed up that way when you start working it into the paintwork the whole pad is going to work for you not just specific not just sections of the pad you don't need to go overboard like that's hopefully you're catching that on camera so that's good enough right there because then once we prime it we're gonna put a little two piece size drops maybe three so definitely an important part is to uh work in sections if, if like if you've never really polished before you don't want to work this big old section because then you're just overworking yourself and you can't really control it as well so definitely just wherever section just work in a in a small two by two section, just spread it out right here. All right, you're gonna spread it around. Then you wanna put it on, on a low setting, between one and two and a half, I'll put it on, on one, and just spread it around. You're just gonna spread the product around so it can spread it on the surface and on the pad as well. There, that's it. All we want to do is spread the product around. Okay, so next is we're going to bump it up to let's say four and we're going to do a crosshatch pattern, meaning we're going to go left, down, right, down, left, down, right, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, left, up. And you're going to want to overlap with the pad. So if our first pass is right here, Right, when we come back down, we're gonna wanna, so let's say the end of the pad is right here. When we come back down, we wanna make sure that our pads are overlapping. That way we are correcting the entire surface that we're working on. You don't wanna uh, stop the pad right here and then jump down here and have this little gap open uh, on the paint. So you wanna make sure you're overlapping your passes and you're doing a cross hatch pattern. So I'm gonna put it on four. I'm gonna put medium pressure right now. I'm not, you don't wanna just hammer it right now because it might not need it. Uh, so I'm gonna put medium pressure and start doing very slow movements. You don't wanna rush your arm. You wanna move your arm very, very, not very, very slow, but you don't wanna rush it because you wanna give it time to work into the surface.
and just like that it was super slow arm movements i wasn't going overly crazy with the uh, down pressure i don't want you to think that it's like super scientific in terms of how much pressure how much you know how much uh how fast do i have to move it just a very you'll get a sense of it as you actually go out there and work on it but the gist is slow arm movement light to medium down pressure in a cross hatch pattern and repeat that process until and when you're first starting you're actually not going to really know but look how easy it's coming off um, you're really not going to know when you're just starting when to stop so after two full passes of the cross hatch pattern you want to inspect the work so that means turning off the machine getting a towel wiping it down and then inspecting now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be happy with the results or that all the scratches came out on the first pass you may need to do multiple passes in order to actually get the results that you want and based off of here i would say those results are pretty good yeah, if we can see all the scratches there. And on the right side there, it's polished out. And this was just with a polish for a few seconds. It wasn't like I was there, you know, finessing it too long or I did a two-step correction. It was just one step and we got those results. So I would say those are pretty good for anyone that wanted to polish that out. So it might be a bit different on how you attack each panel based on the contours, on the machine that you're using. Meaning if you are using a long throw, but maybe a lower quality long throw, and maybe not even lo a low quality, maybe just a long throw like a 15 or 21, and you're working on concaved areas, it may bog down more than an eight millimeter. Uh, each, each polisher is gonna have its little pros and cons and nuances that you have to figure out as you polish. Um, but if it's on a flat, flat surface, just about any polisher should do it. Um, when you're working these contour areas, maybe not this, but like on a truck that has a little groove on the hood um, or on, you know, any vehicle that just has some weird contours, it might not work as efficiently because you always have to have the, pan, the pad completely flat on the surface. You can't have it midway where like, like a quarter of the pad is up and the rest of the pad is down on the surface because that just not being... You know, it's gonna, it's gonna rotate the most efficient when it's just completely flat on the surface and it can just do this. Once you get one side lifted, you're putting too much pressure onto one side and that's when it starts to bog down. So you need to have the pad completely flat at all times, no matter what you're working on, unless you have like a rotary or something, but a dual action, you need to have it flat, flat on the surface. So obviously no polisher, but so you always need to have it flat on the surface. If you have it even like this and you're trying to polish this whole section, but the pad is actually lifted up like this, it's, gonna, it's not gonna rotate as much and you'll get a little bit of, it'll, it'll bog down quite a bit because there's just an imbalance in the distribution of the weight and the pressure. So remember, you, want, you, need, to, you need to mold the polisher to where you're working on, meaning like- So you see this little, what, do, what would you call this? Someone leave, it, someone leave it in the comment section. What would you call this? This little line here, this little groove. Um, but let's say this one isn't that bad and, and you can pretty much get away with it pretty easily here. But let's say it was a bit more aggressive of, of a contour line. You wouldn't want to just polish it just like this because the pad is not going to mold like this over the, the, the line when you have the polisher on. So with this line here, you'd want to first polish it. You'd want to polish this side first or whichever side, but this side first with the right side of the polisher, right? It's going to be, it's going to be rotating like this and you'll polish out this side first. Then you come to the left side and use the left side of the machine and this part will be out spinning freely because it's not touching the surface but it's still flat on the surface and you need to clean this part first. Hopefully that made sense. Pat's not going to be touching this side of the paint and even though I said it has to be flat on the paint, it technically is on this side because we're not bogging it down with anything on this side. So it's going to be, it's going to be spinning efficiently here. Now if you try to like just the do it right down the middle and get both sides and you can't because like it's on, a, it's on a cascading contour if that makes sense or i'm just not good at using the right words uh you're not going to be efficient so hopefully that made sense whenever you're cleaning like a contour edge you're gonna you're gonna use you're gonna focus on one side and get this side down go to the right side use the other side down and the uh, Hopefully that made sense. And look, if this is your first time, it's gonna take you a while. You're not just gonna breeze through it, right? Like now that I know how it finished down, I, I'm actually not, I wouldn't take that long on this panel 
because it's finishing down pretty quickly. So, but with you, when you're first starting, there's no time clock on this. Don't rush this. So I'm gonna put another, what, four dots on here. There's no rush. There's no reason for you to, to be in a rush if you're just getting started on this. You don't have to finish the vehicle all at one time. Do it, do it in sections. You know, if this is your first time out, do the hood uh, and just, just do the front end of the vehicle the first day and next weekend do the roof and the hood or I mean the hood and the whatever so you can break up the vehicle in sections that way you don't overwhelm yourself with like trying to get everything down perfect and in a rush so now i'm going to spread this around it's already primed so i don't need to go too too crazy with the product i'm gonna spread it around Okay, it's spread around. Now I'm gonna do a little bigger section just because I wanna show you that like, as you get better, you'll be able to extend the working time just a little bit more. This paint is, is, is uh, coming out super easy. So just to show you, like if you're just getting started, you can play with the duration or how fast or how slow you're moving. So uh, let's go ahead and get polishing. I put it on speed four. I'm not putting an excessive amount of, of pressure. Like you can almost just use the polisher with one hand. And ideally, you should be able to polish the paint with just using one hand, just to show that, you're, that you have the, pal the pad and the polisher on the surface flat. Now, obviously, you don't want to go. You don't want to polish the entire car with just one hand. It's just to show you that like, you should try that yourself, just to make sure that you always have the pad flat on the surface. But obviously, you want to use your second hand, and you want to put light to moderate down pressure on the polisher. So on this one, I kept up around the same arm speed as I did earlier, except I just worked a much larger section than I did before. And because I know it's coming off relatively easy, I'm able to push that boundary just a little bit. Now, if this paint required a two-step correction and it was hard clear coat, so the scratches were coming out, it was difficult to pull out the scratches, I'm not gonna work a huge panel 
because I want to be able to focus in my efforts on a small section because that's what, that's what it requires. But if, it, if it's an easy paint to polish, well, you can push the boundaries a little bit. You don't have to work it as long. You don't have to work it as slow. You can probably work a, li a little larger section, but it's just going to be dependent on the condition, the type of paint. And if you're doing this as a business, well, how much time you got and what are you being paid to deliver and the expectations of the customer. So it came out pretty good. Again, we're getting about the same results with just a one step polish on this pretty banged up paint. I mean, most customers would be completely ecstatic about these type of results. And look, could we go with a two step correction? I guess we could, but how much more results would we get based on what we have right now? I would argue not significant to really do a two step correction. I mean, you could just because there are some deeper scratches, don't get me wrong. Um, but for a one step, I mean, this is definitely not bad. And most customers would be very, very, very happy with this. Okay, now a big question is going to be, well, how many pads do I need to get the job done? Now, technically, right, if you're doing this uh, as, as your personal thing, if you have one pad, technically speaking, you could do the entire vehicle. The only thing you have to keep on doing is cleaning out the pad as good as you can clean. Now, I would make another video on this, but real quick, what I do to clean pads is to just spray an all-purpose cleaner. Make sure you like overly saturate it. You, you work it in under you know lukewarm water and then just wring it out and just repeat that process. Spray PC, agitate it with your hand or a brush, rinse it out and then put it on the machine, put it on speed five and let it ring out for like 10 seconds and you basically have a dry pad ready to go. And this is, you know, if you just have one and you're doing it as a personal vehicle, it's gonna take, it's gonna be kind of, you know, slow because you're gonna do like two panels and then you're gonna have to go and clean it. Two panels and you're gonna have to go and clean it. Uh, but if you only have one pad, uh, technically speaking, right, you can do it with just one pad. But if you're doing this on your own personal vehicle, again, depending if you're doing a, you know, F-350, uh, super duty, long bed, extended cab, extended wheelbase, extended doors and mirrors and extended uh, you know, rear view mirror, it's going to take you a lot longer to work on that versus doing a, you know, Fiat or a little Honda Civic, you know, like th there's going to be a clear difference in size. Also, this is a five inch pad. It's technically a five and a half inch pad. This is a six and a half inch pad. So clearly there's a big difference in size, but I always recommend the five and a half, five and a half inch pads because it's just easier to control. Um, so a five inch backing plate with a five and a half inch pad, uh, it's going to add more time depending on the pad size and just the type of the condition, the type of paint, the results that you're getting. So those are all going to change. So, and, but in pads at a minimum four would be good to be honest, you're still going to have to stop midway, clean them all out, dry them out and then get them back on the vehicle. But at least it, it gives you a bit more time to keep on working instead of working and stopping, working and stopping, you can work quite a bit of uh, a few panels and then go clean them out. And in terms of how many panels you do, again, it depends on how much like oxidation or gunk that there is, how much it's pulling off, how much, how much um, compound or polish that you're using. But let's just say just starting off, like if you just wanted a definitive answer right now, I'd say, and again, like the roof versus the hood versus a quarter panel are completely different sizes. Let's just say two and a half, let's say two panels, clean them out just as like a clean little black and white, you know, I'm just saying it as it is. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll catch the drift because you don't want, you don't want to clog these up. You don't want to work it for four panels. And by the second panel, like the second, yeah, by the second panel or the third panel, it's completely filled with gunk and, 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 and like oxidation and all that jazz. And it's no longer cutting anymore because all the, uh, the whole, the entire pad is filled with gunk. So you always want a clean pad. So it's actually doing what it needs to do. And that's cutting and polishing. If you have it completely caked on with gunk, well, then it's not going to do that because it's being, uh, interrupted by all the gunk that you're pulling off. So every two panels, four at a minimum would be good to work the vehicle, cl you know, work through all the four, then go clean them, rinse them, and then dry them on your polisher. As far as towels, again, it depends. Let's say under six towels. Uh, again, this is just a, like if you're doing this on your own, if you're doing this on your own, six towels, six polishing towels, uh, not including the ones to remove the wax or polish or the coating if you're doing that. 
Um, again, I'll leave all the links down below, two towels, two some pads. There's so many options, so many uh, brands. So I, it's really hard to say like, just use this because it, it's whatever you want to use guys. It's whatever you want to use, but I'll have my recommendations down below for that. But that's going to wrap it up right here. Hopefully this helped you out in some way, shape or form. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns down below. Check for all the links in the description box and I'll see you on the next one.